one of the things is uh, as I was rewatching your um, the little talk you gave at at OLC, you uh, you mentioned that you that you and or CSU CI uh, kind of think about piloting maybe a little differently than some folks, um, or you 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 try to do different things in pilots than some folks do. Like some folks are are really seeing it as a kind of like. Um, purely evaluation uh, kind of exercise um, where they, you know, they'll, they'll make a choice based on the outcomes of the pilot. And I, I'm, I'm sure that's part of a component of what you're doing, but you, you talked about pilots a little bit differently in that talk. I don't know if you remember, <laughs> um, but how do you think about piloting? Uh, yeah, so I mean, it, it kind of depends on the tool. And I mean, this is actually a process that we're just now kind of really trying to formalize um, on our campus. So it's, it's something that we're really trying to kind of develop exactly what are the steps that we go through. Um, I think what you're referring to is when we were doing, we, we called it a pilot phase for Canvas, which was our LMS shift. Um, and when we did that one, we, we framed it as a pilot with intent to, with intent to adopt. Um, and that was, that was really, but there was a lot of other uh, kind of stuff that went in. That was a CSU level. We went through an LMS evaluation um, with different vendors and stuff like that. So there was a little bit of kind of background work already done in that instance. Um, the stuff that we did with Hypothesis, uh, well, I mean, the benefit we had with Hypothesis is technically we already had the tool on, um, but we weren't really getting a bunch of use out of it. And part of that was we weren't publicizing it, that it was there. Um, and then some of the faculty that we had use it when it was there, um, it had some stuff that was a little buggy at the time. Uh, and then we heard from you guys, hey, you know, we fixed some stuff, we had looked at it and we had used it within our team seeing like, yeah, this does work a lot more stable. Um, and then when the idea of a pilot came up, it sounded like a great opportunity to kind of partner and also get the tool some more widespread use. Uh, Cause it's definitely something where the functionality was there. We knew that the faculty would be able to use it. We saw merit in it. And it was really just, this was kind of an opportunity to one, get the word out for it, but also to have some kind of top level support from you guys, which was great. Um, and that was a big incentive to get our faculty on board too. It's like, hey, you're gonna be in this, but it's not just gonna be like a pilot in the sense that here's a new tool, go play with it. There was actually some structure. Um, so that was part of what we're formalizing at CI is kind of that plan. So having the administrative support from you guys, but also having, uh, we did multiple check-ins throughout the pilot uh, and they were all scheduled out. So we, we got our group together, had an initial onboard. And then from there, you know, we said, these are the onset requirements of you as a pilot member. So we require them to do certain things and parameters within it. So they were held accountable um, for actually doing it. So it's not just like, here's a new tool, you get to use it. And if you don't like it, I mean, whatever, no one cares. Like we needed some actual metrics out of it to some extent, but we also wanted the group engaged uh, both with the tool and with each other. Um, and that actually kind of turned into one of my favorite parts of the pilot process. And like as a whole was actually seeing the faculty share what they were doing with it with one another. It was just like sitting in a think tank with this new new tool that they hadn't used before. It was actually really fun to watch. So. That actually hit, hit on a couple of points that I was that I wanted to draw out. So, um, you, you know, it's interesting that you use the pilot as an opportunity for this kind of, let's call it a, you know, a communications campaign to, to reach out to faculty about the existence of this tool. Um, and you said you were saying that you gathered people in these focus groups, um, you know, kickoff and then, uh, you know, kind of touch points along the way. How did you how did you first um, gather the faculty? How did you identify who would participate? So we're fortunate in the sense that our uh, teaching learning innovations team, we have a group of what we call uh, mm -hmm. faculty ambassadors or faculty fellows. Um, and this is a group of faculty that we've brought on. Um, we bring them on like a semester basis. So we've, we've built up a group over the years um, that works pretty closely with us. So the nice thing is once we get them, it's really supposed to be like technically a semester long fellowship. But once we work with them and they work with us, we, we don't really let them go. So our team kind of indirectly grows. So we had a good core network of faculty fellows that we kind of reached out to initially. But then we also took a look at what the tool was um, and you know focused on collaborative annotation and how it really could apply in different 
kind of disciplines, uh, English and composition came to mind really easily. So we tried to grab some specific folks out of those kinds of programs. And then we also put it out there just to anybody that we had talked to, hey, you know, we have, we have space in this. Anybody that you think is interested, spread the word and have them get in contact with us. Um, and we actually had, once, I, once we threw that kind of invitation out, I actually went to the composition team's program meeting at the beginning of the semester and just did like a really quick fire snapshot of like, hey, there's this tool we have. This is kind of sort of what it does if you want to learn more and you're interested. And we ended up getting like four or five folks out of that group. So we did, it was kind of a combination of just organic word of mouth and then also, you know, kind of intentional programmatic, um, you know, demonstrations and invitations. Um, and then, so it was, it was a grab bag of different things. And we ended up with, I think, 16 people that signed on to do it. So it was, it was a good group. And we got, we got people out of, uh, you know, some disciplines we don't work with all that closely, uh, like history. We got uh, a great, uh, great professor out of there. And we don't do a ton with history faculty historically. Um, <laughs> but they've, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. We had a pretty diverse group and it was awesome. That sounds interesting. I'm really uh, I'm, uh, interested to hear about this faculty fellows group that you guys steward. So that's uh, kind of like folks that you build a relationship and then that relationship sort of maintains over time, it sounds like. Yeah, so we, we end up, um, I forget exactly how it works. I think there's, a, there's a, a bit of course release time that we build into the fellowship. So they come to us, it is actually an application process. So they, they come to us and they propose a project that they want to do um, and something that we could in some capacity support them um, in doing and then from that we bring on it's like two people um, and we'll bring on those two people and we work with them to get that project so there's a little bit of the course buyout so that they have the time to work on this project um, and then we just get to build and foster that relationship uh, with them the whole time so some of our first ones um, that we had, we had uh, Jamie Hannons and Jacob Jenkins, and now those two are basically leading and running our OpenCI initiative, which is our um, affordable solutions initiative on campus. So they're doing all this work around OER stuff and um, our Z degree programs, which are degree programs you can get through entirely without having additional costs for textbooks. Um, and I mean, they, they were some of our early fellows and then they just, they, that was kind of their project that they started working on together and then it's taken off and they're running this whole thing. Um, so that's kind of like the stuff that we try to foster. And I mean, our, it's turned into where we have like our small core team meetings um, like every week or so, but every like, like once a month we have what we call our big team meeting. And that's where we have all the fellows and everybody. It's just this big long table of not just us, but we have the faculty voices around. Um, and it does, a, it does a lot in the sense that it helps keep us grounded in the group that we help support and it also connects us closer to our students. So it, it serves a really big purpose uh, with our team and our campus. So it's, it's very intentional um, and it works out great. That sounds really, really great. I, I wish every institution were doing that and maybe more are than I realize, but I haven't always seen that intentionality. It's, I mean, yeah, we're, I mean, we, and we talk about it with a bunch of people and there's a lot of campuses that are doing stuff similar. So it's, I mean, that kind of networking happens too, but um, we, we definitely have a special group of faculty at our campus. And are there, it sounds like it, and partially because you've been um, kind of engaging with them in this way, did, uh, are there students also kind of engaged at that level of the process? Um, not a ton. Uh, however, we do have a couple student assistance that we try to bring into the conversations as much as we can, uh, especially when it is stuff that kind of focuses around, um, you know, things that we're doing faculty and faculty are doing with their students. We try to incorporate them in on like any kind of panel that we do or anything like that so that we have that student voice represented. Because I mean, we don't, the last thing we want is to just speak in a silo and think that we think we know what we're talking about where we're actually way off base, you know. So having that kind of representation is important. Um, I'd say that's something we could probably build up a little bit more, but student assistants that we have right now are great. And they, they, the, one of the best things about them is they are honest. They will tell you exactly, you know, what's working, what's not and why. Um, so it's, it's great to keep them incorporated too. 
Yeah, that makes sense. It's, it is, I mean, students have other uh, needs and are really busy. And so it's, it's, I know from my experience, it's really hard to get them to, you know, large numbers of students to participate in things that don't count for their degree really. But um, when you're also yeah. paying them to, you know, to be involved, that's, uh, seems like cheating, but it's actually probably the best way to do it. I mean, it, it definitely works. And at, at the end of the day, like the students are the ones that we're serving. So if we don't have that voice represented, you know, you could end up doing stuff that's just not doing justice to the students. And that's ultimately what we're after, right? So it, it's definitely needed. Well, this is stepping back a little bit, but um, how did Hypothesis first get on your guys' radar? Did it come from some faculty member or was it something that you guys identified or how did it first, do you remember how it first reared its beautiful head? <laughs> I can't remember exactly who it was, but it was definitely a word of mouth thing. Um, and we just saw the web version first and it was just kind of like, hey, there's this, there's this tool where you can go ahead and you can just mark up anything on the internet. And we were like, what? No. We figured that out, and then once it was, uh, you know, the, the step further was, you know, it, we can plug it into your LMS, and people can use it with, you know, the readings and stuff they're already doing in their class, and it's like, okay, there's there's something here. Like, this is something that would be really useful. I mean, it, it makes it so that, you know, you can take your own notes privately in a digital format in a way that actually makes sense, but you can also develop this really rich conversation around these readings and stuff that you're supposed to be doing for class, because it's really hard to tell, especially in an online class, if, you know, the readings, if students are actually engaging with them um, at a level that you're necessarily wanting, right? I mean, you can have those conversations and discussion boards and stuff like that, but, you know, for what I've seen a lot of times that that leaves a little bit more to be desired. Um, and it's kind of just like, yeah, you could have skimmed it and got that information. But when there's a conversation happening directly on the content, it, it's kind of, it's irrefutable, right? So um, I, I don't remember, yeah, I don't remember exactly where we first heard about it, but I remember it, it took hold pretty quickly once we saw the, the potential with it. And then, you know, move forward to the pilot stuff, you showed it to some faculty and they instantly saw the exact connections too. They're like, oh man, I can actually like take this thing that I'm teaching them how to do and they can apply it directly to a text in class with their classmates and not only apply what they're learning, but also communicate with each other why or why it's not working or, you know, actually take this thing apart. Um, which, I mean, <laughs> in my AP English class back in high school, I wish we had stuff like that because it would have been great. I mean, that's pretty much what we did in a classroom, but it makes it so that you can transfer this to an online space and actually maintain that rich conversation. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense and resonates with, with what other people have have been saying that idea that the conversation can take place on the text, like you said, it's irrefutable then that, you know, how and where the conversation is going on as opposed to the discussion forum where it's sort of to the side and could be, could be less intense. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. So um, what, uh, you know, you talked about how for your team, you know, making connection to a discipline that you hadn't made before was, um, was kind of a great outcome of the pilot with that connection to history was from what you've heard from faculty and or students were there what was were there other kind of like uh you know kind of uh amazing possibly unexpected or expected outcomes that came out of that piloting work um i i don't know about necessarily outcome but it was really like i was saying earlier like one of my favorite things of hearing is just the different ways instructors were using it um we had one of our instructors, I'm, I'm going to mess this up exactly what it was, but they had, it, they were doing something where they were, I think it was, they were doing a unit on paraphrasing. Um, and instead of just, you know, she actually used hypothesis to do it. So they threw a document it up and it was like, okay, I need you to take a chunk of this and then paraphrase a part of it. And then they were able to like work, all the students were able to do their own, but they were also able to look at other people's and be like, Oh yeah, that's okay. That's interesting. And then the instructor was also leaving comments on it and be like, okay, this worked because of this or not. Um, and it tied directly into their curriculum, but it also served as an active practice, um, which was one of the coolest that one of the coolest outcomes out of it that I saw. And it was just like, cause it took something she was already doing in her course. Um, but it gave it this whole new kind of life in terms of an activity with the class. Um, 
And she said the students were really, it, it drove the point home. And the students really, she said, grasped it really well with that type of exercise. Um, so getting to see that kind of thing and how these different instructors were hitting it from different angles. Um, it's one of my favorite things about any kind of tool that we adopt, right? I mean, at the end of the day, a tool is a tool. It does, you know, it, it serves a purpose to do a certain amount of functionality, right? But it's when you put it in the hands of people that you really get to see what it can do and how it can be used. Because at that point, they can come back and be like, never would have thought of doing it that way. Like, I literally pull up a website and add notes to it, like a Google Doc like not innovative groundbreaking stuff, right? And then you have an instructor come with it and be like, yeah, I had this active engagement like activity that I used to do in my class and now I just threw it up here and everybody got to you know, actually practice what we were teaching. It's like, whoa, I, I, I mean, I'm not on, the, and that's why I love working with the faculty. I'm not at that level in a classroom every day. Um, so getting to see these tools used in unique and innovative ways is the best part about it. That makes that makes sense yeah and it's we see such a variety in the way people use it in ways that we can't even anticipate you know it's like <laughs> oh my god we never thought of that exactly and that's like the coolest part of any of it it's like oh cool <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you may not know this but that made me think um were you uh do you have any insight into the different ways that that faculty incorporated annotation into their assessment like were um, was it being used as a part of the grade, you know, for assignments that were part of the grade or, um, you know, was it similar to maybe like discussion forum assessment practices or do you have any insight into how that was being used? Yeah, I mean, it was, um, I definitely know they were using it for, um, you know, graded work just because <laughs> one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got out of it was, I need this to integrate with SpeedGrader, which I know you guys are working on. So getting that to that's going to make all the pilot faculty and i think everybody else that wants to use this thing they're going to be doing like cartwheels once they see that thing working because that was the number one like feedback point that we got was everything was great i just wish i could push it in a speed grader and it was like that makes total sense um so i mean in terms of what kind of i mean they were i know they were doing some sorts of uh you know kind of uh summative assessment like that but i know that they were also like the uh going back to that paraphrase activity they were doing formative assessment with it too just to kind of check in and be like it's active practice to feed and i think those things were even graded too um but to a lesser extent it was more just you know i want to see where you're at with this and make sure you grasp this concept um and i think there was a lot of value in that for sure yeah well that uh i mean that what you're talking about um really gestures toward how this is super valuable for hypothesis too because it's through engagements like this that you know we hear this direct feedback from folks who are really using the tool like on your team so that we know what to do next on the roadmap to make sure that it's happening and um yeah from uh from my understanding we'll be showcasing the speed grader integration tomorrow so uh your, your dreams have come true your input has been heard that's all. And I want to give you guys kudos for that. I mean, you guys have been receptive to all the stuff that we've gotten. It's, you know, it actually impacted your roadmap and being able to see that is, that's the kind of stuff we look for in, um, you know, partnerships with vendors is like, we want to be able to, last thing you want is where you have a tool and you throw feedback into a black hole and you're like, yeah, that'll amount to nothing. <laughs> yeah. Two years from now, it's still in the, in the forum or whatever with no remarks. Yeah. yeah. Getting, getting thumbs ups and whatever it's like eh, okay <laughs> yeah i'm still on a couple of those forums for something where it's like every time somebody gives it a thumbs up in github i hear about it and it's like six years later or something like right. that yeah, still still hasn't happened though <laughs> yeah so um actually uh, i remembering what it is now it was uh so that github issues could have uh deadlines but anyway that's another that's a whole nother story um <laughs> it's github itself uh so I know that you guys, because you shared it with us, I know that you guys did some uh, surveying uh, of the participants. And so is that, um, is that the main way that you um, got feedback from folks? It sounded like you probably also did face-to-face -face in those sessions that you had. Um, but could you talk a little bit about how you guys structure getting feedback from people and how you incorporated into that about thinking about what to do with the tool next? Yeah, so I mean, the, the check-in meetings so we did along our pilot timeline we had two uh check-in meeting the check-in meetings that were scheduled um and that was with you guys and me and the faculty that could come um 
so in those meetings we got uh because it was kind of just an open floor like let's see what's going on how you're using it show some stuff um, but also let us know what's working what's not so that was kind of the the informal feedback but those were definitely times where we were able to gather feedback about um just about the tool in general and see what the general experience was um and then the formal uh the formal data that we gathered through the evaluation form that we sent out at the end of the semester, that was kind of like the more formalized and documented data um, that we got. So we did, it was, it was a combination of the two, but we did require that our uh, faculty or our pilot faculty did go through at the end of the semester and complete uh, the evaluation survey so that we had some stuff to actually report on after the fact. Um, and it was, it was good stuff. I mean, that way we got to get, you know, stuff to refer back to and be like well this is what they liked about it this is what they not and then we got to get a general sense of is this a tool that's worth sustaining because that's ultimately what we need to look for in a pilot is see is this something that is worth adoption like if we get <clears throat> generally speaking a positive note on it likely that will trickle to majority of faculty that use it i mean you're never going to get a tool that makes everyone happy but it's not a mandatory tool either it's not something you have to be using um so those are the that that kind of metric is what we use to kind of guide and steer the next steps um in terms of adoption and the, if i remember correctly the outcomes of that survey were showed pretty strong uh you know uh kind of uh enthusiasm for for the people who participated in the pilot for yeah, using we had, um we had no negative feedback at all. It was all either neutral or positive. Um, and even it, it weighted more on the positive side. There were a few that were kind of just, you know, indifferent on some of the, some of the questions we asked, like, um, you know, some of them were like, you know, would you refer this to someone else? And they were like, I don't know, maybe. Um, but you know, most of, most of it was, was on the positive end of things. Yeah. That makes sense. And so, you know, looking back on it now that you're on the other side of this pilot, um, was there anything that you would do differently in the pilot than what you did or would ask hypothesis to do differently? Um, you know, from your standpoint, I don't think so. I th like you guys were very available, which is really the best thing that we could ask for. Um, like Jeremy allowed us to have a Calendly link put up on our website that went directly to a place where our faculty were able to book an appointment with them. I mean, to to an extent, like that's kind of unheard of. <laughs> like you guys are literally like, yeah, schedule meetings with me. Um, so that was great. And I mean, just having that in there as something that was offered, even if it wasn't utilized a ton, it was there. So that kind of support was great. Um, like I said, our pilot process, we're still kind of figuring it out. I think part of it is really just figuring out um, exactly what evaluation data we want and need um, moving forward just to make sure that we actually have basis for adoption of new stuff when we get to that point. Um, that being said, I think we did a pretty good job for the first one that was formalized like this, but it didn't form something. So we're refining a little bit, um, but overall and generally speaking, I think that the overall process worked well and the faculty seemed pretty receptive to it. That makes sense. Hey, uh, before we move on, could you um, just give me a quick, you said about 16 part faculty participants were in the pilot. Can you just, to the best of your memory, can you give me a quick rundown on like what disciplines they represented? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's the morning test. I, like, I know we had history, we had English, composition, um, ESRM, I believe. Uh, who else did we have? Political science. What's ESRM stand for? Uh, God, I <laughs> I'm really testing you. Environmental Science and Resource Management. I hope. <laughs> I'm 95% sure that's right. <laughs> you know, we can. This is one of those things that we could uh, follow up on later and get right in prose. Uh, so. Yeah, for sure. I don't want to put you on the spot. Um, I got it. It's environmental science and resource management. <laughs> we have a winner. Oh man, I was just saying, our faculty would be so mad at me if I got that wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, we wouldn't put anything like that up on video, so don't worry about it. Um, that's whoosh. Yeah. So you had uh, you had humanities folks. You had some STEM folks. Yeah. So we had we had arts and sciences group. We had STEM folks. We had stuff out of you know political science and history. So it was a, it was a pretty wide net. Um, 
which I was stoked for. I'm that's one thing I would say I'd probably like to improve on is just get an even wider group of um of faculty moving forward in our future ones. But like I said, first one out of the gates, I was really excited with the the diversity of the group. It was it was cool to see. And was that um was there a mix of both online and face to face or blended courses or yeah. Yeah, we had uh I think a lot of them were blended or online, but we definitely, well, actually, no, we had, we had, it was a mixture of all three modalities for sure. Um, so yeah, it was, it was all over the board, which was awesome. Yeah, that's great. Cause then you really have uh, everybody testing in different environments. Exactly. Well, so I don't want to take up all your day, but uh, how about one, at least one more question here? Like uh, wh what are you guys thinking to do next with annotation and hypothesis? I mean, obviously the speed grader thing is coming out. And so <laughs> at the very least you can, uh, can implement that. Um, although I don't think the implementation will take that much actually, but um, what are you yeah. guys thinking for next? I'm looking forward to that, not having to do much part. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, the biggest thing I think moving, forward is just kind of getting more uh more people at the table and using the tool um so that part of that is just going to be ongoing support but also um you know these kinds of anytime there's like a feature a major feature update like the speed grader integration it gives us an opportunity to kind of communicate it and bring it back to the forefront be like hey there is this cool thing that we have that folks should use um, and you know, it's just it's just putting more word out. Um, and we really, really like having that kind of organic growth where it's like, you know, get the this group of faculty that we have right now excited enough about it to the point where they're recommending it. Because um, some of our most successful stuff has really come from that. Um, so it's, it's right now we're really just trying to get, I think, get people hyped on it um, and just kind of explore and get them sharing. We wanna get people sharing what they're doing with one another because that's really what ultimately will drive the adoption. Um, you know, we can stand up there and give demos all day and talk about it and say, this is great. But when you're an instructor and you hear from other instructors that are actually using it, they're like, well, I was able to do this really cool thing with my students. That's what's gonna get people excited and want to use it. And that's the kind of growth that we really want. Um, so, you know, we, we, we're good at finding those excitable groups that are just like, yeah, new stuff, give me, because that's what we are. <laughs> um, but really just emphasizing that collaboration amongst their peers and that, that kind of organic growth is our next kind of focus, really. That makes total sense. That reminds me of this thing I've been wanting to do for a while, which is um, put up a little uh, a sort of easy way for a faculty member to leave a kind of little video vignette um, about um, you know, one of the cool ways that they've used annotation. Um, so they could just like kind of pop in and do like a, you know, one or two minute quick uh, video. I saw somebody else do this and, um, you know, there's folks all over um, the nation and the world really that are doing this. So it'd be great to just have that kind of compendium of, of ways different people using it could become a kind of recipe book for other folks. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It turns into like an inspiration wall of sorts, you know, it's like, well, there's this thing I heard about, but I don't know what to do with it. And it just, get some ideas. Yeah. Love that kind of stuff. Especially if people could tag themselves by discipline and modality and stuff. And then, yeah, that could be really cool. Well, thanks for reminding me of that idea because <laughs> I'd love to do that. And if we get that up and running, we'll let, we'll let you know so you can. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Cause we'd, we'd leverage that for sure. Put your faculty on it for sure. Yeah. Hey, um, one thing I forgot to ask before is, um, did you, so you guys were obviously offering your own hands-on support for this and you talked about how hypothesis was was also there for support did you feel like the support burden during the pilot for hypothesis was uh, large or how would you characterize the support side of it really minimal actually um but that was kind of the nice thing it wasn't like every time we were doing stuff you hit roadblocks i mean there were questions that came up, sure, but I mean that that comes with the territory of anything new. I mean, even stuff that we've had for ever, we get questions on stuff. So um, it was, I would say, by no means was it like we saw, you know, this flood of stuff. We're like, well, I tried using it, and this didn't happen. I don't know what to do from here. Um, you know, we didn't hit any of that, and I think a lot of that has to do with one, the tool worked great, um, but also that we had that initial kickoff meeting where we kind of showed that you know, general workflow of how everything worked, that helped a lot. I mean, that, that, and we recorded that webinar, so we were able to blast it out to everybody so they could refer back to it. Um, I think that 
that did a lot of it. And even during that kickoff, people were kind of building stuff um, as we were going through it. So that way they were able to kind of at least see things. And if there were parts they were confused about, we got a lot of it out of the way in the beginning. Um, and then from there we had, you know, your guys' support, we were able to, you know, field some questions Then we had documentation that between all those things, it was fine. It, it was in no way, shape or form did it get in the way of, you know, everyday work at all. So it was, it was great in that regard. And is that, did you have uh, much student support needs, like students having trouble with annotation? No, not really. Um, we didn't hear, we didn't really hear any. I think we had maybe one faculty who said they had a couple students that were having, you know, some difficulty getting it loaded up. But I mean, even those things, they were like little browser glitches, which happened with anything. <laughs> It's kind of the, the daily grind of just, you know, working in technology for, um, you know, in education. It wasn't, there was nothing that was like, oh my God, we can't run this thing anymore. Nothing close at all. So, Yeah, well, as you and I both demonstrated this morning, there can always be a little technology glitch, right? I mean, on stuff you use every single day. <laughs> like, uh, yep, it happens. Well, that's, uh, that's all really great info. And I think there's a lot of stuff in there uh, that um, we can use. And I really, I want to um, make something that, um, you know, someone just like you at another institution can look at and be like, oh, here's a human being who did this thing with their team and it actually worked out. Um, yeah. So I think there's a lot of good stuff in there. Is there anything else that you would give as advice to someone uh, like yourself uh, who's just maybe thinking about embarking on a pilot like this? I'd say take the plunge and go for it. I mean, <laughs> realistically, like that's the best thing you can possibly do. I mean, obviously research it, but for speaking specifically to hypothesis, it was easy. I mean, it was, it was painless to get up and running and get going. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of setting that initial bar for as we get this process going with, you know, potentially bigger vendors or whoever else comes through the door that might be more challenging. You know, we know that it can be this smooth and easy. Um, so I would just say, you know, gather a group of faculty, get them excited about it and try it out. I like the idea that you would hold other vendors to our standard. That would be great. <laughs> I mean, anybody that we get to work with that's simple and easy, that's, that's my standard of working with anyone. <laughs> like, I don't want headaches and jumping through hoops. No one You'd does. You'd be like, come back to us when your hypothesis levels are <laughs> <I just> <laughs> Let's start throwing that out there. <laughs>